I was uh, born in uh, East Africa, Tanganyika. At that time it was Tanganyika and uh, now it's called Tanzania. We left the country in 1962. I was about six years of age when we left. And I just could not understand when we came to this country what the hell we was doing here. I mean actually one day my, uh, my dad bought a mango and I took the pip and I took it in the back of the garden and uh, I planted it. And I just could not understand why the damn thing would not grow. My parents, they were very lovely. Especially my mum. My mum had 11 children. My dad, he never ever borrowed money of anyone. He never had a debt. He was very religious, pious, and very strict as well. He made sure that we was disciplined, and we made sure that we had mannerism, and we respected the elders. At school, I used to be, I used to be good. I used to be good in my work. I used to be good in art. I used to be good in maths. I used to be good in metal work, woodwork. I was very good at my work. Uh, the only thing is, I was very active and I liked to play football a lot, and I liked to do a lot of things. Well, I used to get in trouble fighting, but fighting was always because it always came to me. I would not hit anyone for no apparent reason unless that person came and hit me or he was hitting somebody else. And I, was, I would always get the blame for fighting because I could fight. And secondly, I could not take the abuse because if somebody called me a packy, or if somebody called me a gollywog, in them days they used to call you a gollywog, blackie, all these kind of words. Uh, I hated that. That that really used to get to me and uh, I used to I used to defend myself. I didn't like racism, so I used to defend myself and I always used to get in trouble for defending myself. Children of God, if we believe in the name of Christ. I used to bank off a lot. The reason of banking off because I didn't get no evening time with my friends because I'd be working in the evening whether it was in a handbag factory or whether it was in a house. But because of this, because of this, I missed out a lot of schoolwork. But I was clever enough to go and get take my exams and sit down in all my exams. Do not know when Christ came that he was the Son of God, and this is why we have in this time confusion because man is deciding to believe that Christ is not the Son of God, that he did not come into this well, when world. When I left school, I was working as a mechanic, doing an apprenticeship. I was quite good. And the truth is One day. I decided to drive one of the cars, the pickup truck, to a friend's house and I didn't have a license and I got caught by the work workplace that took the pickup truck and I got the sack. Without Christ, how can we reach God? Without Christ, how can we reach God? Without Christ, how can we reach God? When I got the sack, I went straight out and looked for another job mechanic. I got a job. But while I was working there, I got caught up with mischievous guys and I started to do wrong things. 
start to smoke cigarettes, start to smoke a bit of weed, but this mischievous thing got I me into know, trouble. I know that Christ is alive. What it is, maybe I was searching for freedom because of the freedom, lack of freedom I didn't get when I was young. So I start to smoke spliffs, I start to abuse the system, start to go night clubbing, start to go around places, womenizing, wearing nice clothes. And to wear nice clothes and to go night clubbing, you needed money. And you ended up, you ended up becoming a criminal because you end up mixing with certain people who became who was criminals and you end up doing what they was doing. So I end up becoming a criminal, got caught. One day, ended up in Bolstow and I served my time. And when I went into Boston, I became a bigger criminal. What can I say? You know what I mean? I learned, I learned more about criminality in Boston than what I knew outside. I think if they were to put me in Boston, and if they would have put me like in a detention where I can go home and come back and something like that, maybe I would have learned all the tricks of the trades. So when I came out of Boston, I had more more friends who were criminals. So I became more of a bigger criminal. So I got caught again. And I went inside again. When I was 22, 23, I did my last sentence. After that, I never went inside again. But it didn't stop me from criminality. I just became a more of a clever person. And I was with more bigger boys and they were more clever and these bigger boys are those people who are at the top they are the rich people and they know how to do a crime there is without getting caught and if your religion believe in God you are doing good now it doesn't mean to say that when Christ comes I got married to an English woman and I spent my time just as any English person I was cockney as hell, and I, if you'd have, if you'd have seen me, you wouldn't have known any difference whether I was a Muslim or a non-Muslim. We know that the light man of God will come right where there's an Islamic table and do that. What's he causing? What's he want to do? An argument, a fight? When the authorities told him to walk on and he's showing what his true colours are. Christians, onward Christian soldiers marching to the war and they say they turn the other chicks, they say they're peaceful people. Is this what a preacher is? The key to salvation. I speak in this way because I know what is true. We always used to argue in the house because I never trusted my wife and she never trusted me. I was just as bad as her. I had many faults just as much as her because I used to go out with my friends and all that. But what happened is that I was making money. I knew how to make money. But the thing is, with my wife, she was just materialistic, decorating every six months and things like that, new things and all that kind of stuff. I mean, we just broke up. And I did, did try to keep the marriage going. You know what I mean? I know I wasn't a perfect husband, but I had room to change. I know I'd made mistakes. I know I did things wrong, but that's a mistake. And a mistake should be forgiven. But the thing is, where I found it such loneliness and that, I ended up taking crack. 
and I was on crack for two years. A long time ago, 2,000 years ago, Christ gave his life in order that we may get life through him. That life he had his blood spilled for us. And that blood that was All my household goods, I sold up everything. There wasn't even a carpet left. There wasn't even a mattress left. I didn't even have a kettle. Nothing left in the house. But we now got very hard, rough. Before I start selling the stuff, I sent my daughter to my sister's house and I sent my son back to his mum. I was getting really bad. I was spending sometimes two thousand pounds a weekend, but because I had good friends at the high places, I could get money very easily. I could make money very easily. So it was very easy for me to buy crack. I didn't have to go and mug people or go do burglaries and things like that. Money was just rolling when I needed it. I could do people favor and they would give me money. One day, one of the big boys, rich people, somebody said, I got 10,000 for you. So when he gave me the 10,000, I said to myself, is, it, is this is going to be my death? Or am I going to get out of this? So when I went up to India, I cleaned myself up and my dad phoned up my brother and said to him, get him married up, find him a wife, because he needs a wife because he's got children. So I found this beautiful English girl, I'm an Indian girl, practicing, she was covering, I didn't like the covering at that time, but she was covering, she was beautiful, she was young, she was 10 young, years younger than me. She liked me, I liked her. I thought, yeah, that's good. She was a virgin, can't be bad, you know what I mean? I says, well, Bob goes your uncle. Let's get on with it. Four weeks with my wife, and I got a phone call. My dad is seriously ill. I quickly packed my bags, went straight to the airport, got an emergency flight on British Airways. Two hours before I was going to land, my dad passed away. And after that, my life changed. I'm not a greedy person anymore. I'm not running after money. I'm not running after materialistic things. I'm not a womanizer. I'm not evil. This is what was missing out of my life. 